and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That is Islam. You pay for your sins, I pay for my sins. Jesus himself, when he was addressing the scribes and the Pharisees, he said, Verily I say unto you, or his people, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. And how can you be better than the Jew? By not keeping the laws and the commandments. In fact, the idea is quite clear in Islam. أَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْمَعْوَى نُزُلًا بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And for those who believe and do good deeds, for them are gardens, a refuge and entertainment for what they did. As James says, even so, faith, if it hath not works, it is dead, being alone. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without action is dead. It is Iman and Amalu. Amalu Amal Salihat, Amalu wa Amalu Salihat. They two are together. In the Arabic language, the word has to only change a little bit and it becomes a different part of speech. So in conclusion, I can say again to my people and of course to Christians here, don't close your mind before it's too late. One of the particular people would tell us that it's a plain reading of scripture makes sense, then seek no other sense. If someone, what, what was there to prevent God from forgiving someone? If someone were to slap you and you say, I forgive you, it's over. I don't say, well look, I forgive you for slapping me, but come and let me slap you. You don't need that. Similarly, when you forgive our debtors, as Jesus said, you forgive the debt, it's finished, it's over. Tomorrow night. Again, in conclusion, I'd like to uh, summarize by saying, nowhere does Jesus claim to be God, nowhere does he make the claim that he's divine. In fact, he goes out of his way again and again and again to emphasize his humanity. If he was God, why does he go out of his way to emphasize the opposite? I can of my own self do nothing. My Father is greater than I. My Father is greater than all. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. Thank you and God bless you. That is okay. Wisdom, thank me. Hallelujah. All praises are due to Allah, the creator, the cherisher, and the sustainer of this universe. And may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophets, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, son of Mary, and Muhammad. Peace be upon them all. You don't need that. I like the sun here, by the way. I have a lot of Kenyan friends and it was always my dream to come to Kenya and I always heard that Kenya is very beautiful but not that beautiful actually it's very beautiful and we have winter in the other part of the of the earth now so I'm enjoying the sun um, if you want to learn about what happened in Tahrir it's amazing, it's unique every revolution in the history of the world had a leader. There was a Gandhi leading the revolution in India. There was uh, uh, Ahmad Rawi leading a revolution in Egypt. George Washington leading a revolution here and there. And, and, and you had Nelson Mandela and others and Steve Biko. What's amazing, what's unique about the revolutions of these of this, of this year, whether in Tunisia or in Egypt, is that these are revolutions without leaders. No leaders. And the people are not divided. Millions of people, all of them, they know what they want. It's incredible. And I was reading yesterday in the Quran, and I read the verse in the, I think, Surah Al-Anbiya, I think, that Allah is saying, بَلْ نَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ لِيَدْمَهُهُ فَهِيَا هُوَ زَائِقُ Allah is saying that He is throwing the right on 
the wrong so that it may kill it. And subhanAllah, when we push the wrong people, I understood when I read this verse who was the leader. Allah was the leader. Allah himself was leading this revolution. Believe me. SubhanAllah, I thank the United States of America for one thing. Facebook. <laughs> they invented Facebook, we used it. Today, your brothers are using it in Libya. You will see, the next will be Qaddafi. After 43 years of ruling, those countries are republics. All we want is just to see a republic. Anyway, I didn't come here to speak about Egypt. I came here to tell you that what can I say after what I heard from Brother Yusuf? Nearly every single point that I wanted to speak about, he touched upon. I would like actually to agree with Pastor Jared. I want to agree with him that there are dead people who are walking in the streets. And I agree with him that some of those people are dead because they don't know Jesus. So let's know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Surah Al-Nahl in the Quran it says, those who they invoke besides Allah, some people worship others besides Allah. Okay. Those people are dead. They are not alive. And they know. And then the following verse is speaking about the heart. Your God is one God, but for those who do not believe in the hereafter, their hearts deny. So yes, the death, also in Islam, can be the death of the heart. Some people when we see them walking, they are not dead because they don't know God. And they mix between God and his messengers. Let's speak about Jesus and the Quran. Because you cannot be a Muslim without Jesus. You cannot be a Muslim if you don't love Jesus. You cannot, you cannot be a Muslim if you don't love Jesus and his mother. When Jesus was mentioned by name in the Quran 25 times. Prophet Muhammad was mentioned by name 5 times. It doesn't mean that Jesus is better than Prophet Muhammad by the way. Because Moses was mentioned even more than Jesus. 106? Yeah, so, but this is just to tell you how important Jesus is. Jesus had titles in the Quran, like the Word of God, the Sign of God, the Spirit of God, the Messenger of God, and the Messiah. We have a whole chapter, long chapter in the Quran, named after his mother, Mary. According to the Quran, Mary is the purest woman who ever walked the face of the earth. But we don't worship him. And that's what Prophet Muhammad told us. Don't exaggerate in love and then you end up, or not in love with me, don't exaggerate in exalting me and then you end up worshiping me like the Christians worship Jesus. We believe in his miraculous birth. Yes, it's true that he was not born from a father. He had no father. But this doesn't mean that his father is God. Where Eve was born without a mother. When Adam without a father or a mother. And every time we see that we say, Glory be to God who created Adam by a miracle. Glory be to God who created Eve by a miracle. Glory be to God who created each and every one by a miracle from a father and a mother. Why when we, Jesus, when we see Jesus born without a father, we will say glory be to Jesus. No, excuse me. Glory be to God who created Jesus without a father. Moderation. Moderation is the challenge of each and every one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Wa kathalika ja'anakum ummatan wasafa And so I have made you a ummah wasaf A nation which is moderate Where is this verse? In which chapter? In the Quran Al-Baqarah Verse number what? 
Al Baqarah is 286 divided by 2. It's exactly in the middle of Al Baqarah, 143. Allah made you the middle nation, the moderate nation. We do not believe that Jesus came to save us from the original sin. Simply because he didn't say so. I challenge you, where did Jesus say anything about the original sin? I challenge you to tell me where did Jesus even say the word Adam? He didn't even mention Adam once. And then he wanted me to believe that this is why he came and I cannot be saved except if I believe so. By the way, Jesus' mother was mentioned 36 times in the Quran. 19 times in the Bible. I'm just showing my Christian friends that it's very important to believe in Jesus if you want to be Muslim. I would quote here the companion of Prophet Muhammad who went and met the ruler of Egypt, giving him the letter from Prophet Muhammad and he told him, I don't want you to think that we are forbidding you from the religion of Jesus. Actually, we are inviting you to join the religion of Jesus for the first time. And I don't want to mention to you what bro Brother Yusuf mentioned about the way Jesus prayed. It's Matthew 26, 39. It says, and he, Jesus, went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. We believe that Jesus was a prophet. According to the Bible, in the hands of Christians today, Jesus was a prophet. Numerous verses. I will go only one. Today or tomorrow. This is Luke 13, 33 and 34. Today or tomorrow, I have to go out of Jerusalem. Because no prophet of God will be killed except in Jerusalem. He said he's a prophet of God. Several times. And the Quran says, the Christ, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. Same verse came again also in Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad was no more than a messenger. Those are messengers, human beings. I am not going to speak about the Gospel of Mark, John, Luke, or Matthew. I will speak about the Gospel of Jesus. Ask my Christian friends, where is the gospel of Jesus? Because it's there in the Bible, in the letters, in the letters mainly of Paul, he is speaking about the gospel of Jesus. And don't tell me that he is speaking about John, Luke, Matthew, and Mark, because those letters were written at least 30 to 60 years before those gospels were written, according to Bible scholars. So he's speaking about something called the gospel of Jesus. In Romans 15, 19, he's saying, I have fully preached the gospel of Jesus. Not the gospel of Mark, or John, or Matthew, or Luke. 15, 29, he's speaking about the gospel of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he's speaking about the gospel of Christ. Galatians 1.8, there are uh, some who pervert the gospel of Christ. So he's speaking numerously about the gospel of Christ. Where is the gospel of Christ? And some people would ask, where is the gospel of Jesus? Then? Why will Allah preserve the Quran and not preserve the gospel? And not preserve the Torah? Does Allah differentiate between his books? No. Allah protected the gospel of Christ too. This is the gospel of Christ, of Moses. Allah protected the gospel and the Quran and the Torah by protecting the Quran. Anything that you need in the gospel of Christ is here. Anything that you needed that you need in the Torah of Moses is here. They were preserved. I will skip the part about agreeing together that God is the greatest. And then Jesus saying in John 14, 28, the Father is greater than I. 
the pastor is telling us that this is as Jesus coming as a man. He's speaking like that, sitting with the crowd. No, do you want me to say that Jesus is lying? Jesus is saying that the Father is greater than him. Either Jesus is lying or Jesus is not God. I would choose Jesus is not God. But Jesus will not lie. Same thing, of myself I can do nothing, many things. But what really amazes me, how Jesus speaks about the revelation that comes to him. John 8, 26, he says, Whatsoever I have heard from him, these things I speak. Which means I don't speak out of my own self. Only the revelation that I receive. As a, as any prophet, as a good prophet, as an honest prophet, he will not talk out of his own self. Like Prophet Muhammad did not talk out of his own self, or Moses, or Abraham. Jesus is saying in the Bible, in the hand of Christian today, that he doesn't speak except what he hears. Can Jesus be God and he is receiving revelation? Does God receive revelation or God reveals to prophets? Jesus' miracles. Talking about the fig tree. Brother Yusuf spoke about the fig tree, but I would like not to talk about, I would like to talk about the disciples. The reaction of the disciples when Jesus cursed the fig tree and then it dried. What did the disciples do? They marveled. Wow! the disciples at that time believed that Jesus is God, then there is nothing marvelous in this. It's not a miracle. God can of course make a tree dry. But because Jesus is a man, because Jesus is not God, that was a miracle. So the, all the miracles of Jesus prove his manhood, not his divinity. If you just think about the different, main differences between Islam and Christianity. The divinity of Jesus. There's a big dispute on this. Yes, it's true that there are verses that the bro Christian brothers and sisters are using to prove the divinity of Jesus. But they are all, they all need human interpretation. As clear as so. It's like I and the God and the Father are one. You need a human interpretation. So the divinity of Jesus is not there clearly in the Bible. Not there very literally in the Bible. What else is a difference between Islam and Christianity? The original sin. And I don't want to be dragged to talk about the original sin because tomorrow's lecture is only about the original sin. Do Muslims believe in the original sin? Yes, we believe in the original sin. But we don't believe in the inherited sin. But that's an original sin. But the original sin in Islam is not, is not the sin of Adam. There was a sin before that one. And we will talk about this tomorrow. But again, talking about the original sin, talking about the Trinity. Trinity doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. Except in one verse. First Epistle John 5 7, which was removed from newer Bibles, from the Revised Standard Version, from Darby, from the Bibles that were printed in the last 50 or 60 years because they put that it was not authentic. So if you just look at these main topics that are the differences between Islam and Christianity. Okay. you will realize that Christianity is nothing but Islam plus these things. If you remove these things, that's Islam. Let me quickly conclude this. As Muslims, guys, we believe in one God. And I think Christians, brothers and sisters, also believe in one God. And we also believe in one humankind because there's no difference between us. We don't believe that men are better than women. We don't believe that whites are better than blacks. We don't believe that, that uh, Arabs are better than Indians. So if there is one God and one humankind, this means that there is one sender and only one recipient. 
God is the sender and the humankind is the recipient. If there is only one sender and only one recipient, why would anyone saying think that the, the same sender will send to the same recipient different messages, contradicting messages? Therefore, there cannot be more than one religion. We do not believe in religion Z with an S. There is only one true religion and it is not the religion of Muhammad nor Jesus, nor Moses, nor Abraham, but rather the religion of God, Allah in Arabic, Allah in Hebrew, God with a capital G in English, Dieu in French, which he communicated to the humankind once through Muhammad, peace be upon him, 600 years before him through Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, 20 years before him with John the Baptist, 20 years before him through Zachariah, a thousand years before him through Moses, a thousand years before him through Abraham, a thousand before him through Noah. One God, one humankind, one religion. This religion should be suitable for all people, men and women, whites and blacks, Arabs and Indians, thin and fat, tall and short, young and old. What in the world is suitable for all those people? This. Not everybody drinks tea. Some of us don't drink tea. Not everybody drinks coffee. Some of us don't drink coffee, but all of us drink water. All of us drink water. Why? Because water has no color. Because water doesn't smell anything. Because water is tasty because it's neither salty nor sweet. So the religion of God has to be like water. neither salty nor sweet. That's why Islam is the only religion in the world which is not called after someone. <laughs> not called after any group of people or a tribe. Not called after any geographic region like Hinduism called after India as geographic region. Judaism after the tribe of Judas. Christianity after Jesus Christ. Buddhism after Buddha. But Islam is called after who? <laughs> The whole world knows how much Muslims love Prophet Muhammad so much, but it's an offense to Muslims when they are called Muhammadians. How come? Did you ever think about that? Because, because simply, we are not Muhammadians. We are Muslims like Muhammad, like Jesus, like Moses, like Abraham, and like Noah. Islam is a concept, a set of beliefs. If you have it in your heart, you're Muslim, you don't have it in your Muslim. Islam comes from the root of the word Salama in the Arabic language. And from the same root, you can have three different words in Arabic. Is this Islam, which means submission, Salama, which means purity, and Salam, which means peace. Submission, purity, and peace. Surprisingly, the word Islam idiomatically, the word Islam Islamically is a combination of those three words. The word Islam means that if any person fully submits himself or herself to the will of God and 